Good morning. We're in a grain bin here this morning. So this is our wet bin and uh, we're going to start filling it up with a little bit of dry corn to get that dry cone and funnel that I was talking about yesterday. Uh, the floor is pretty dirty. Phil sweeps these bins down really well. In fact, if you look at the walls, you'll notice they're very clean because he sweeps the walls down as he's pulling the corn out of them. Uh, but this bin in particular, a lot of stuff sticks to the roof because of the humidity and how wet it, the corn is when we're putting it in here. And then as it dries out over the summer, it falls off. So we're just going to sweep it up real quick and then start transferring some corn. So the floors in these bins are fairly easy to sweep in one direction, going that way, and very difficult to sweep across going that way. Uh, the reason is the, the texture of them. They are a corrugated kind of metal and they have holes in them. And those holes are for airflow. And so there's a, there's a, a, a gap underneath this metal floor and the concrete underneath it and there's a, we have an aeration fan, or a big fan on the outside of the bin that blows air in between that gap and then it comes up through those holes, works up through the grain to help keep air moving through it to keep it from molding and rotting and to help dry it down a little bit. Good enough in here. Um, we put this piece in here, this is uh, what they call a sump guard and basically it's there to prevent our sump from getting plugged up. So clearly we have three sumps in here that you always pull out of the center one except for at the very end when nothing else comes out of the center one and then you pull out of these two to put a sweep auger in here. Um, if you watch some of the other YouTube guys, I know Brian's shown where they've had uh, bin sumps plug up and can't get stuff out of them. That sump guard there helps break up chunks and stuff before they get stuck in there and the corn can't get past it and then you have problems and cut holes inside your bins. We're trying to avoid that. And so we put that in there. It seems to work pretty good. Um, but anyway, this is clean enough for me, so I'm gonna get her shut up and we're gonna start transferring from that bin. All right, so we should start hearing corn go down in here. There it is. We'll look in a minute. Um, so on our distributor up there, let me get back so you can see better. That mouse was hiding inside of our bin. He didn't like the corn falling on him. I wasn't going to catch it. Uh, anyway, so if you look up top there at our distributor, kind of right in that area, let me zoom in. You might be able to tell there's a valve up there that's got one pipe going in the top, two coming out the bottom. Man, it's really dark. I don't know if you can see it. And on that, basically one of them goes to our dryer, one of them goes to our wet bin. There, that's a little better. So we're talking right here. So basically the way that one works is that the corn will pass straight through it, go down to our dryer, and then when that pipe fills up, it overflows into our wet bin. Well, we've got a gate on there that we can shut. So we shut that gate so that the corn just goes straight into the wet bin bypassing uh, the pipe to the dryer, so we're not filling the dryer right now. Um, so that's what's happening. We're, let me show you back up here. So we are pulling out of this bin. There's an auger in that tube that's running. It's pulling the corn in here, dumping it in the bottom of our um, grain leg boot. The grain leg grabs it, takes it up to the top, throws it down that pipe into this bin. I should be able to open this up without too much damage right now. Yeah, no, you can't see anything, but we're getting a pile of corn in there. Basically, we need to run enough corn in here to get it up to about here on the sidewall, or maybe my first indicator light there. And then you'll have, you'll have that on the sidewall. It'll be peaked up in the center, and then we'll run this auger coming out of that bin, and we'll draw the center down so it's coned up so that it'll be the highest at the sidewall. And we'll pull that corn out of there and probably use it to prime our dryer. We'll put it in our dryer, our, our big dryer here later. So you might remember that it was gonna rain last night when I left. It didn't. Two hundreds, that's all we got. It got a little windy, a little dark, a lot of lightning to the north. We got no rain out of it. So I guess we're gonna shell corn today. That's a good thing. Uh, Phil, yeah, he did leave. He's taking the load up to uh, the ethanol plant there where we've been hauling stuff. Uh, they close at 11 today, so he's only going to get one load in. Uh, we've got two more that have to get up there. 
by today, but they're closed, so I guess they're going to give us a couple more days to get it up there. Um, so that is what it is. All right, while I'm sitting here transferring some corn, I decided to do a little data analysis. So here's our uh, yield map for that field that we just finished. A couple of things that jump out at me. You guys see over in this area how there's a strip that's red? That's around those electric poles, and there's a reason for that. I'll tell you in just a second. We got another red streak right here. That one, I know what happened. I ran out of anhydrous in my tank and I didn't catch it quick enough and we had a strip right there that didn't get any uh, anhydrous on it. So that's, that's okay. But um, let me show you something. So this field, remember I told you we sprayed some um, uh, fungicide on it. I'm gonna zoom out just a little so we can see the whole field better. Uh, we sprayed some fungicide at V5. So I'm gonna highlight the areas of the field that got sprayed, ready? Okay, so the gray areas did not, the area that's still a yield map did, all right? So I sprayed most of the field, but we've got that strip there around the electric poles. I skipped it because I didn't want to go around the electric poles. And then I ran out on this end of the field. We didn't quite get all of that. So let's look at both of those areas a little bit closer and see what kind of a yield difference we're looking at. First of all, let's look at the whole field. Uh, harvested area, sorry, there was 53 acres that got sprayed, 21 that did not yield 168 versus 149. That's almost 20 bushel difference. Now let's highlight out specific areas. We're gonna do like right here. We're gonna take the end rows out of it because end rows don't count. So just in that area there, there was 8.7 acres that got sprayed. 3.8 that did not, 170 versus 148. That's over 20, 21, 22 bushel difference. Okay, crazy, 22 bushels. Let's clear that off and go to the other side of the field. And I'm gonna not get that area that I know is a nitrogen problem. We're gonna go right on the edge of that, all the way across the field. We'll go over to here. We'll skip whatever that red area is on that edge. I don't know exactly what caused that. And then we'll come up here and highlight that. So now we'll look in this spot. There was 7.3 acres that did get sprayed, averaged 165. 8.3 that did not, averaged 154. That's still 11 bushels over on this side of the field. Fungicide pays. Even early fungicide pays. Came into the next bin that we're gonna start filling just to make sure everything is set up right. This one has a power sweep in it, so that's a sweep auger that when you get to that dry cone, or the cone that uh, won't feed out through the center sump or the side sumps here, you turn that on and it augers the corn into the center there. Um, but it stays in the bin all the time, so we kind of line it up right over these uh, intermediate sumps and uh, yeah, that way, yeah, and it, it works, trust me, it works. So this one's quite a bit cleaner, there's a little dust on the floor. I'm not worried about that, Phil might be, but I'm not, so we're gonna call that good. I'll have him double check it before we start actually filling, but I just wanted to get it close. Hey look, my light's on. Uh, if you don't, if you, if you haven't watched since last year, I put some uh, proximity sensors in this bin all the way up the side, and uh, they're attached to a little LED light that comes on when the proximity sensor has grain in front of it. It's super cool. Uh, so we've got enough corn in there now that uh, when we suck it out, the, we'll have the full funnel and cone. So what we're gonna do is go up and open up the uh, gate on that uh, valve up there, which I can do from a handle right here. And we're gonna suck out of the wet bin and put dry corn into the bottom half of our big dryer. So that corn is making its way back up the leg and pretty quick you're going to hear it start plinkoing down through this dryer. Here it comes. We'll get a little bit bouncing out. We'll go up and look in the holes, I'll show you, but we're going to fill about half of this up. Alright, I know it's loud, but hopefully you can hear me. So this dryer has a bunch of little triangular vents. And there are other ones that are open to the center. And all of those vents have a seal that goes across it, but are open on the bottom. And so the corn is kind of bouncing around all of those and filling this dryer up. So you can see once we get uh, a little bit of corn in there, yeah, it's full. Still filling up here. 
Okay, I got our dryer about two thirds of the way full, so that is good. I'm pulling the rest of the corn out of the dry funnel in the wet bin and putting it up in the overhead. Um, I had way more in there than I needed apparently because I was able to get the top section of the door open and uh, it's about empty, but it's still sucking some out. Okay, it ran empty. So you can see in here, maybe, uh, one, the reason why we need dust masks when you're cleaning out bins, but there's our sump guard, so the corn is pretty well ran out of there, and you can see how we've got a funnel in there, and the idea here is you don't want wet corn that sits for a long period of time. So if we just filled this up with wet corn, because this is our wet holding bin, uh, the corn in the bottom that's still in here now would all sit there until we swept it out at the end of the year, and it would probably mold and rot and go bad. So by filling that with dry corn that won't rot and mold because it doesn't have enough moisture content to do so, um, we don't have that problem. And then the wet corn that we put in on top of that will all funnel out and be sucked out into the dryer when the dryer needs corn. Now there is some nuances with angle of repose of wet corn versus dry corn and stuff, but for the most part, this is pretty efficient and it works well. All right, so I've got the crane system stuff all ready to go. Um, I'm running around doing just a little bit of seed business stuff here this morning. I know we need to go shell corn, we're gonna go shell corn, um, but I have to do the seed business stuff too. So it's, it's I got a lot going on. I'm trying, trying really hard to get everything done. Uh, I, I have a customer that has a plot out for me. They asked me to fly the drone over it and take some pictures of it. So I'm gonna go and do that real quick and I can check in with them about a seed order for this year. Uh, they're close, so it'll only take me 20 minutes, half hour or something like that. And then when I get back, Dad and I are gonna start moving to combine and get into the uh, field here and we'll get started. The other thing is Phil's hauling that load up to Albion. I have no idea how long it's gonna take him today. Yesterday he was there for a very long time. Um, the second load he took yesterday, he was waiting in line at the plant for over four hours, almost five hours. Uh, so hopefully he gets back quicker today because it would be really helpful to have him here. Uh, they're closing at 11 so we won't get a second load in and uh, he can help us haul trucks and do stuff to keep shelling this afternoon. So we're being a little patient to hopefully help wait for him to get back is kind of the idea. All right, I'm moving the combine to the next field. It's gonna take us a while to get stuff moved here. Um, it's 10 miles, the combine, we gotta get that there. Then we gotta get the grain cart and I can only go 20 miles an hour with the grain cart. So it's just, it's, it's a process getting everything there. Well, we made it to the field, clearly. I'm just gonna run the endros off. Dad's sitting over there in the lane um, waiting to take me back to the farm to get the grain cart. So, just making room for stuff. Okay, um, I ran these ends off and then Dad took me back. We went and got the grain cart. Uh, when I was running, I noticed something sounding weird, rattling kind of. I thought maybe a bearing was out. So we got to looking around and uh, well, that's not supposed to happen. This nut came loose. So we gotta tighten that up. So I grabbed the tools while I was back. Uh, I gotta take this piece off so we can get a nut on there and fix it. All right, I um, tightened that one up. I brought the torque wrench because the torque spec is 100 pounds plus 60 degrees. So I got it and set it right. I went through and checked all the rest of them. There was only one that was just a little loose. So I tightened that one up too. And we should be good to go there. Let's show corn. I better film some from the combine seat while I can before dad kicks me out of here. So uh, we're getting the endros done here and uh, opening this field up. You can see we've got some broken stalks. Some of that's coon damage, but there are broken stalks out here and that's why we're here because I want to get it before it gets worse. Because I hate down corn, more coon damage. Um, some of both here. I thought it would be a little drier than it is. It's 23, which is fine. That's not wet or not horribly wet, um, but I had tested some and it, it was like 19, so I don't know if there's some pockets out here that might be drier. However, it is much better corn than what we were in yesterday. Um, field average is over 200 already. Now, right here it's not. There you go. Some of this is fantastic corn, so this one's gonna be more fun, I think. It's also some very pretty corn. If you've been watching my videos a little bit this summer, you've heard me talk about the one variety we have called, that we call candy corn. That's this one. It's very dark orange, reddish color. 
and uh, super high grain quality, good test weight on it. Um, this is, this is, it looks nice, it's good. I was hoping that our uh, local elevator, so we're kind of, we're 10 miles from a home farm, but we're only about three miles from the elevator that we haul a lot of our corn to. So usually we'll haul this farm and the field across the road that is ours straight to them. But I called them this morning and they're not taking wet corn yet. So we're gonna haul it home and dry it. Well, I got booted. Um, really what sounds like it's gonna happen here is um, because we're so far away, it's gonna take two of us hauling trucks to keep up. And the nice thing is these rows are super short in this field. So dad can make rounds with the combine, uh, which means he can combine by himself. We'll park the grain cart on the end of the field. And Phil and I can both jump in a truck and go. And uh, we should we should be able to keep up hauling and shelling and we should get a lot done here. This is good. I tell you what, you throw a two in front of that number that the corn starts with, the yield starts with, and everybody's in a better mood. This is much, much more fun. And uh, we're, we're having a real good time now. Phil took the first loaded truck back to the farm. I am uh, just running grain cart until I get um, another full truck, unless Phil's back, in which case I'll let him keep hauling and I'll keep running grain cart. But I have a feeling that uh, we're gonna need to run two trucks to keep up, so yep going good all right time to be a truck driver dad's good here he can make rounds and just dump into the grain cart we're gonna take that truck and phil and i'll just pass each other as we go and when he gets here he can unload the grain cart and take it and when i get back i'll unload it and go and should work out well here oh yeah i just asked dad on the radio uh how it was yielding if we're still still good corn he said the average is up to 207 that's excellent. That's excellent. <sighs> That's what we were expecting coming into the fall. That first field was just a major disappointment. So hopefully it's more all like this than the other one. All right, we are getting this uh, truck unloaded here. Uh, this corn, like I, like I was telling you in the field, it's got that really pretty color to it. You can really see it in the sample here, especially when I put it next to some of the other stuff that we shelled. I mean, they're just drastically different. This is dry, they came out of the dryer. Um, this was better quality stuff. It is a little bit wetter than we were hoping, 22 to 23, but 55.9 test weight, that's good. Uh, Phil had a 56 there, it says so, and 22.2, so it's it's good quality corn. Um, we'll run it through the dryer and get it hauled in. Back in the field, let's go jump in the combine for a minute. Can definitely see a few broken off stalks or ones that are leaning like that. That's why I was concerned about this and wanted to get down here and get it. Yeah, they just snap right over when you push on them, so no good. Always good shots when I'm climbing up the combine. Playing truck driver, we're unloading the cart here and then uh, make, make another trip. This will be my third load all back to the farm. Dad's about got this field knocked out, round or two over there yet. It's uh, still really good corn, in fact, it's getting better. So that's uh, this is fun. My lights are working, that's cool. So, for reasons somewhat unknown, I hard for me to explain, but. We did not start this dryer up yet. It's full, it's ready to go. All we gotta do is push the button and go. Um, but we decided we're gonna wait till the morning to start it, so um, that's fine. We're gonna have a little bit of wet corn and that's part of the reason we wanted to have enough wet corn that we don't start it up and then have to shut it down because we run out of corn and can't get it here fast enough. Uh, it's nice to have somebody here to watch it a little bit closer when you're first starting it up and with Phil and I both trucking it in and out um, and not able to sit here, it's, yeah, we just decided to wait. Plus, um, we're gonna dry this corn into the overhead bin and haul it out right away as dry corn start filling our fall contracts that we have. And there's a little bit of wet corn in the overhead yet uh, from the first field that uh, 
needs to get hauled to the ethanol plant. I'm sure that Phil is going to try and take at least one, if not two more loads, tomorrow. So when we get done tonight, he can load up a truck and get the overhead almost empty of all the wet corn that's up there. And then we can start drying into it, no problem. And it, it just, it does make sense. It's, yeah, trust me. Back at the field, um, dad finished across the road there around the house and jumped across into here. And from what he tells me on the phone, um, this is drier. I fully expected this to be five points wetter from the hand test that I had done, but he says it's drier. That's awesome. But it means it's go time. Like I've already said that it's go time, but it's more so time to go. I'm gonna jump in with him. We're playing a bit of a dangerous game of hide and seek in the corn here because he will not be able to see me. But those rows that he's combining are on an angle. So as long as I stay out of them, I should be all right. And I'll jump on while he's going by. Um, this corn is standing better. So that is good. But it doesn't take a whole lot to snap those stalks off. So he's coming. Here's his row right there on an angle. We'll jump back. There's the corn head. Well, good news and bad news in this field. Um, the good news is the corn's a little bit drier. It's running about 19%. Uh, the bad news is it's not yielding as good as what it was across the road. So we have a couple of different things going on that may or may not have caused that. The first and most obvious is the variety. I have two different varieties from that field to this field. I um, guess I need to get in the green cart, not the semi unload that uh this one here is an older one that we've had for a while um and it could just be that the new one is that much better the other thing is that field was wheat last year this one was soybeans that field got chicken litter this one did not and it's possible that that chicken litter is playing a difference but you guys see that corn standing back over there in that backfield that was also wheat last year that got chicken litter and uh it, it's the same hybrid as the field we're shelling right now over here. So we will know when we get over there uh, what caused the difference, whether it was the variety or the chicken litter. Combines sure are fun to watch. Of course, you guys know that. That's why you're watching my videos, right? All right, I'm getting this truck dumped. Um, a few years ago, I put these really cool lights on under here to shine down into the pit. I got a switch right here to turn them on and off. They're really awesome. The one on the back quit working very good, so I got a new one, so I'm working on switching that out right now. Looks like this. I, I'm just gonna take this mounting bracket off, or well, actually, I'll just put the new one together and put it in there. There, I got it. Just in time for the truck to be empty. See how nice that is? Shines down in the pit so you can see better. Wait. Okay. Um, Phil is getting one more load, and then Dad would have enough space in the grain cart to finish the field that he was in, and we're going to quit. So I don't need to go back to the field tonight. Um, we had a decent day. We're not knocking out huge numbers of acres, but we're getting stuff done, and, and it's good. So uh, Phil's going to load up his truck to haul to another load of dry corn to Albion tomorrow, or, well, kind of dry corn, whatever, to the ethanol plant. Um, he's got two more loads to get up there this week. So one tomorrow and one Friday, or maybe two tomorrow. I don't know, we'll see. I have got some wheat that I have to get delivered to a customer tomorrow. So um, I have to do that. It's a little frustrating, but I have to keep telling myself it is September 15th today, right? Is that what my watch says? Yeah, September 15th. So we're plenty early. I have time, it's okay, it's okay. Um, we are going to fire the dryer up. You can see we got three lights showing on the wet bin there. So we've got a fair amount of wet corn around. The plan is to dry into the overhead, haul dry corn to the elevator, bring wet corn back tomorrow. Um, put my radio away. <laughs> so we'll get that started in the morning. Dad can stay here and kind of keep an eye on it, make sure we don't overflow our bin and uh, that everything is running well while I take care of the wheat stuff that I need to do. And then when I get back, or if Phil beats me back, he can handle it from there, and we'll uh, we'll get this stuff done. So <sighs> that's the plan. All right. Well, we had a good day. 
we found some really good corn that was fun we got into some more stuff that's it's not as good again but um good so we're gonna get that dryer started up tomorrow i got some wheat to deliver we got all kinds of stuff going on i am tearing my hair out going crazy because we've got so much stuff going on right now i have to slow down and keep reminding myself it's september 15th we've got time it's okay so um beans are coming they're not quite ready yet i'm still thinking maybe friday or saturday leaning more towards saturday right now but as long as we can shell corn we're going to keep shelling this corn so uh we've got another uh 80 ish acres i suppose down uh the same area we're far we're, we're working right now and then another 86 on the way home that we're going to stop and get i think so probably going to finish all of that and then switch to beans is the plan so thanks for watching everybody questions comments leave them down below and you can bet we'll see you again tomorrow